Hi there. In this video, we will go over AWS Batch. AWS Batch is a fully managed service provided by Amazon to help run your batch computing jobs. The difficult part of batch computing is that it requires a large amount of compute resources and configuring and provisioning these compute resources for your various jobs can become very tedious. It becomes even more complex for larger organizations where you have a combination of on-premise and off-premise workloads that need to run concurrently. The benefit of AWS Batch is that it helps to dynamically provision the optimal quantity and type of compute resources for your batch workloads so that an organization can fully focus on simply the batch logic. How does AWS Batch work? AWS Batch manages compute environments which are basically the environments where your compute resources are provisioned and job queues where your jobs lie in a queue waiting for the compute environment to be ready to process your job. With AWS Batch, you simply package the code for your batch jobs and specify the dependencies and submit the batch job using either the AWS Management Console, CLIs or the SDKs. AWS Batch efficiently and dynamically provisions and scales EC2 and Spot instances or leverages Fargate and Fargate Spot instances based on the requirements of your jobs to optimize the cost efficiency of your batch workload. Now let's quickly go over how AWS Batch helps meet exam domain requirements for the Solution Architect Associate exam. From domain one, when you design resilient architectures, you are required to determine a scaling strategy for your workload. AWS Batch automatically chooses where to run the jobs and launches additional AWS capacity if needed. And when the capacity is no longer needed, AWS Batch removes it, ensuring automatic descaling. Through this ability of able to launch additional capacity and descale capacity, your scaling strategy is met. Also, you are required to select appropriate compute re requirements for your workload. With AWS Batch, you as the customer get freed from having to install and manage batch computing software server clusters because AWS Batch plans, schedules, and executes your batch computing workloads using either EC2 or AWS Fargate and helps manage the selection of the appropriate compute requirements for your workload. From domain one, design resilient architectures, you have to design highly available or fault tolerant architectures. AWS Batch automatically manages this by running batch jobs across availability zones within region, providing you high availability for your architecture. From domain two, you're required to design high performing architectures and select appropriate instances based on compute and other requirements. AWS Batch gives you the flexibility to choose either EC2, EC2 Spot, or AWS Fargate, or AWS Fargate Spot. It can run your jobs on Fargate when you want AWS Batch to handle provisioning of compute resources, or if you run your jobs on EC2 and you need access to particular instance configurations of a very large scale workloads, you can run your jobs on EC2. And by doing this, AWS Batch gives you the flexibility to select the appropriate instance based on the compute requirements of your workload. Finally, Domain 4 states design cost-optimized architectures. With AWS Batch, there is no additional charge for using AWS Batch. You only pay for the EC2 instances created to store and run your batch jobs. For additional cost efficiency, while provisioning, you can select either on-demand to launch EC2 on-demand instances or spot instances to use Amazon EC2 spot instances to get further cost optimization. Now let's go over some important concepts for AWS Batch. If you take a look at this screenshot, you can see the AWS Management Console for using AWS Batch service. From this image over here, we are right now at the wizard for creating your AWS Batch workload. The steps outlined over here give an idea of some important concepts which we will discuss to help you understand what is happening. As you can see over here, for creating your AWS Batch workload, you are required to create a compute environment, you are required to create a job queue, you are required to create a job definition, you are required to create a job, 
and once you review this the batch workload gets created let's go over through these definitions in further detail if you take a look at this image over here this will give you a better graphical explanation of how AWS batch works first you have the job definition the job definition specifies what the job is as well as the environment variables and the compute resources required to run the job from the job definition the job is passed over to the job queue a job queue is simplistically a queue where your jobs lie waiting for the scheduler to pick it up and place it in the compute environment to get processed the job queue can help you set certain priorities of which job is more high priority and low priority and we will cover that later that information is passed to the job scheduler and the job scheduler using the priority levels assigned in the job queue will assign the job to the respective compute environment as mentioned AWS batch automatically handles managing jobs across availability zones to ensure that your batch processing workloads are met with high availability now let's go through those important concepts shown in the graphical explanation in the previous slide first you have the AWS batch compute environment as mentioned the compute environment is a collection of compute resources on which jobs are executed AWS batch supports two type of compute environments one is called managed the other one is unmanaged managed compute environment naturally is provisioned and managed by AWS whereas unmanaged compute environments are managed by customers a compute environment are split into five basic components which are the name the type state of the compute environment the compute resource definition and the service role to be used to provide IAM permissions to AWS batch it would be good that you read through these five basic components additionally for your own learning a job queue is simply a queue where jobs are submitted and where they reside until they can be scheduled to run in a computer environment an AWS account can have multiple job queues as mentioned job queues have priorities which are then used by the job scheduler to determine which jobs in which queue should be evaluated for execution you can create a queue that uses EC2 on-demand instances for high priority jobs and you can create another queue that uses EC2 spot instances for low priority jobs now this could be a potential exam question because if you recall spot instances can be shut down instantly depending upon if the capacity of EC2 instances are available or not so that is why low priority jobs should be passed over to EC2 spot instances whereas for high priority jobs which should not be allowed to fail should be placed onto EC2 on demand instances the job definition describes the job to be executed parameters environment variables and computer requirements that are used to optimize the ex execution of the job job definitions are de defined in advance of submitting the job and can be shared with others for example the job definition specifies the docker image to be used for the job the compute resource configurations such as how many vcpus how much memory is to be re required and the iam role to be used etc finally a job is simply a unit of work invoked by aws batch jobs can be invoked as containerized applications running on ecs container instances in an ecs cluster to end this video we will go over some concepts which may be potential exam questions for the aws batch domain knowledge so one question could be when is ec2 a better choice than fargate which is a fully managed service by aws for provisioning compute resources for your batch workloads now if you recall aws batch compute environment is a collection of compute resources and aws batch supports two type of co compute environments one is managed compute environment provisioned and managed by aws which typically relies upon fargate to provision the compute resources for the your compute environment an unmanaged unmanaged compute environment is managed by customers and the com unmanaged compute environments provide customers with the mechanism to leverage specialized resources such as dedicated host larger storage configurations and amazon elastic file service so if you wish to run an unmanaged compute environment 
then EC2 may be a better choice than Fargate. Some of your organization users are unable to create or modify batch resources using the AWS Batch Console or the AWS Command Line Interface. What could be the reason? It could be simply that you need to attach IAM policies to the IAM users or groups that require those permissions to create or modify AWS Batch resources or perform tasks using the AWS Batch API. Number three, you may have added jobs to the job queue, but they're not being picked up by the job scheduler. What could be the reason? You need to examine the state of the computer environment. If the state of the computer environment is disabled, the AWS Batch scheduler doesn't attempt to place jobs within the environment. Finally, for as a solution architect, you have been tasked to identify the best way to handle batch processing of a Monte Carlo simulation for insurance company. What would you recommend? In this case, array jobs are the most efficient way to run extremely parallel computing jobs such as Monte Carlo simulations, parametric sweeps, or large graphic rendering jobs. So, I hope you found this video useful on AWS Batch. In the next video, we will go over now to networking concepts and we will start with the most important networking concept which is the virtual private cloud. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and keep watching our channel. Thanks and have a good day.